Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. She is here. She's back. I'm here. Yes. She's in videos. I am here. Uh, we're going to talk about something we don't really talk a lot about, which is millennials and money. Yeah. And uh, I guess I guess it sort of touches touches on a lot of stuff that we talk about in regards to pop culture, because we have a lot of younger people that are involved in pop culture, pop culture, journalism, uh, gaming, all yes. of that. Const Everyone's yelling about boomers all the time. Uh, constantly, yeah, yelling at us boomers, even though we're not boomers, we're actually closer in age to, to these people. But this is really interesting because this has been making the rounds on Twitter again. And it's from two years ago. Yep. Two years ago. And uh, it was about a 25-year-old who makes $100,000 a year and is excellent with money. Yes, I love and, that. Excellent and, money. and we're going to break down how this 25-year-old this uh, spends his money and uh, it's weird because this flies in the face of everything that uh, everybody has told you about you know millennials and money and not having money and why it's making the rounds now I have no idea so they broke it down on this chart this has been making the rounds again on Twitter on Facebook and uh, this is the budget breakdown of a 25 year old who makes hundred thousand dollars a year and is excellent with money in 2018. I love the excellent with money, yes. Excellent with money. Typical monthly spending: two thousand seven hundred seventy-five dollars. So for... you're, you're so you're speaking around three thousand times twelve. So thirty-six thousand dollars is what he spends. He makes a hundred thousand, even with taxes, he probably gets to keep like seventy thousand of it or so. So that's only half his money. Yeah. Uh, I, I okay. I guess if you're if you're young and single, so what he's making, what he's spending is about what everybody makes in general, right? Uh, I don't care how old you are. Groceries four hundred bucks, health insurance two seventy, dining out two fifty, uh, utilities one hundred ninety five dollars. I call bullshit on that one. Transportation one hundred thirty. Obviously, does not well, no, have wait, a car. I think they have. He has roommates, like four roommates or something like that. I think I remember them. People were saying that he has roommates. So when he's that's his share of utilities. That's his share of a housekeeper. Oh my God! I uh, wish I had a house. Cleaner. Cell phone forty bucks, house cleaner thirty dollars, internet twenty bucks, rent eight twenty five. Bullshit. Donations six hundred fifteen dollars a month in donations. I know. I, I, oh my God! So I, you know, this is this is just weird. It's making the rounds now. I don't know why it is. I don't know if it's because everybody's mocking it though. <laughs> everybody's everybody's mocking it. I don't know if it's if it's because people are like. You know, good luck finding anybody in this economy that's making over $100,000 a year, let alone somebody that's 25. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what he does. He might be a tech employee or was a tech employee. Well, it depends where you live, too. Like, if you live someplace like um, San Francisco or Boston or someplace like that, it's going to be a lot more expensive than somebody who lives, like, you know, in Pittsburgh or something. Yeah. So he, uh, he's self-employed. Okay. So, yeah, you actually can make pretty good money being self-employed. Um he earned $90,000 in 2017. He was on pace to make $100,000 in 2018. He wasn't immediately successful. He didn't have a lot of money. Now, most people, if you're working your way up the career ladder, you don't see six figures unless you're like a doctor or a lawyer or something like that until later in your career. You're right. talking probably mid to late 30s, early 40s. Someone like me as a teacher, forget it. <laughs> you will never see that. You will never see that. But what's interesting is they're talking about you know millennials and, and money and all that. And... Um, I want to bring this up because this is kind of, you know, we were talking about the Kickstarter union before and the average salary at Kickstarter, a company that literally just takes money from people and acts as a, a middleman, $98,000 a year. Right, but where is it based at? New York. See, and that's San the thing you have yeah. to understand. Like the reason I brought up that was because places like San Francisco and New York, they might pay you that much money, but you know, that's still like could be poverty level uh, depending on where you're at. Right, or you could, or you could go work for Marvel Comics and make thirty-five thousand dollars a year. Yeah, in the same area. In New York, you know, BuzzFeed, their journos, average compensation one hundred twenty-one thousand dollars. How? That's what they're getting paid. One hundred twenty-one thousand dollars is the average. The highest paid job is a sales manager at two twenty, and the lowest is an administrative assistant, forty-seven thousand dollars. So the average is marketing is ninety five thousand uh, dollars. Half of BuzzFeed salaries are above one hundred twenty. You know, isn't that interesting? Because all the jobs are listing there. You did all those jobs for the last place we were at, and you and you got paid like ridiculously low um, an hour, and I didn't get paid at all. I did not get one hundred twenty seven thousand dollars. And then the argument was, well, interns get that much. 
Yeah, so, <laughs> so <laughs> but I have to point out that both BuzzFeed and Kickstarter have had massive layoffs. That's and I true. think I think those salaries are not sustainable. But I just thought it was funny. Um, a lot of people were talking about this and uh, you know, just where the where the money goes. Um and again, you know, he's self employed. That's that's it. And when we talk about, you know, like comics and animation and stuff too, people don't understand when you work for a studio, you work someplace else, you're not gonna get paid a whole lot. No. The people who are successful and even looking at like manga artists who are very, very successful, they're basically self employed. Their studio produces the manga, they license out the characters to the animation studios, they get a big cut of the royalties, etc. So if you want to make that kind of money, you're probably again, unless you're a doctor or a lawyer or something, you're gonna to have to be self employed. But what he does, I'm like, wait, this is what he does. Um, he does a graduate exam test prep business. So I guess uh, we're on the wrong business, everybody. So let me get this straight. So he's basically getting paid to test people who want to get into the, the traditional career track. Sounds that way. So he's taking advantage help of... help them prep for these tests. So they can go not make $100,000 a year. Basically. <laughs> hey, if he can do it. But he's talking about Harvard, MIT, and that kind of... Those, those students. Uh, you can get more money a lot of time if you just ask for it. I just charge more, and now I make more money. So this is, this is interesting, though, because we have a lot of people out on Twitter who are complaining that they don't get paid enough. And they're complaining about, you know, this, this, uh, you know, job field or that job field. And it's like, why don't you, why don't you just change jobs? Yeah, that's just it. Change learn groups. to code. <laughs> There's good money in coding. Why don't you just learn to code? You could make more money. Well, I don't know. Those BuzzFeed journos, they're getting $127,000. Well, well, it depends. The IT people are getting 96. The marketing people are getting 95. HR's got 123. They're not saying what the average writer are, are they? No, I know it's pretty high though, but uh, well, they're we're paying. Yeah, or they're they're paying per article too. They could be paying per article. Well, BuzzFeed has a lot of user generated content too. So, but these these aren't sustainable anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think I think what's going to happen is, you know, if you're if you're young and you want to make that kind of money now, you're going to have to be self employed because I don't think many companies are going to be offering those kinds I, of salaries. I just love it though. We get comments all the time. It's like that's because people are like you and the, you boomers. That's why we can't make any money. And I'm just like, you know, I don't know why they have it in their heads that everybody that's over a certain age is doing fantastic because I can assure you that there are a lot of people out there that aren't making money like that they think they do. Like they're struggling just as much as, you know, someone who's 25 is struggling just as much as somebody who's 45. It just, you know, it, it's nobody. I mean, there's some people who are, I guess, but I mean, most people aren't making the money that these people think that everybody's making just because you're older. I think that's it. Cause yeah, we, we do. We actually get comments like this. A lot of times we talk about, you know, industry stuff. We talk about, you know, the, you know, the page rates and we talk about, you know, um, different things. You know, you may even mention, hey, we own a house. And you get people like, well, I wish I could own a house. I don't have enough money. I'm like, well, go someplace where it's affordable. That's what we did. Yeah. Don't live in San Francisco. You want to own a house? Don't live in San Francisco yeah, or New York. Or... Is it like one of those, like you can get a little, our house, size, our house the size it is. If it was in like in San Francisco, how much would this house be? Oh, over a million. Yeah. Easy. So I'm just yeah. like, it depends where you're at. It's yeah. affordable if you go places that aren't, you know, but then you don't, then you miss out on all the microbreweries and all the other shit. So you have to decide what's important to you. And if what, living someplace inexpensive, but you can afford the stuff you want is important to us, that's what we did. If, if, if having all the hipster hangouts and, you know, having four roommates and everything and living in the city is important to you, then by all means do it. I recommend Pittsburgh because they're at least affordable and you get all the cool stuff. Well, people are moving out of California. Yeah, they're moving. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about that. Did you tell people about this nuts thing? Uh, yeah, so I have to look into this more, but apparently they're they're trying to propose, allegedly. allegedly, apparently, possibly, maybe, they're trying to propose some sort of law where if you're a millionaire and you leave California, you have to pay taxes to California for 10 years. It's like, it's like I don't, alimony. I don't think that's enforceable. Well, it hasn't passed. I guess it's being floated out there because so many people are leaving California now because of the lockdowns and the economy going to shit because of the lockdowns and the money's not flowing like it used to. And again, this article was written two years ago, but the same principles still apply. He said he owes a lot of his success to his own hustle. Yeah. You, you mean he's a grifter? Yeah. He's a grifter. Oh my God, he's grifting $100,000 a year. He's probably alt-right. That's right, um, clearly. Clearly. Well, the fact that his focus 
is making money. I guess that makes you uh, alt right anymore because you know that is a conservative thing. Mm-hmm. If you actually think that that you should you know work for money and that uh, capitalism is a okay, um, maybe that's why it's making the rounds. Maybe that's why it's making the rounds on Twitter now because you know capitalism is bad. It's not working out that way though because it's funny to me because that's being shared everywhere and most people are like this is nobody makes this at twenty five or I mean some people do obviously but the majority of people are aren't going to be here it, it's not relatable um it, people are making jokes about it right and left I think everybody sees how you know this is the exception not the rule yeah so but I mean as far as it being kind of the rule like I remember we did a video on uh, Monopoly for Millennials it was one of our top performing yes. videos we were one of the first people to, to find it we had it all over the place and uh, a lot of the jokes were basically that you didn't have any money yeah uh, you didn't have any money and that you were your money was actually uh, upvotes Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it was social currency and not actual money. And, um, you know, there were there have been other articles out here basically being like millennials are, are miserable and broke because they spend too much time on social media buying things they don't need, like avocado toast. Well, of course, that's uh, not you know, everyone. Very, I know a lot of millennials who aren't that way, right, you right. Know, especially around here, because you have to hustle. And yeah. I know a lot of people who aren't like that. But, you know, it's it, it's it's playing to the, um, you know, to the cliche memes and things like that it's playing to that but some people play themselves in, they do. into that role too they they if, if you get that victim mindset you're owed something because you're well you, you ruined it for me so i'm owed money it's like we didn't ruin anything for you he owes we get, we get ruined it gets ruined for us too yeah right uh he owes much of his success to his own hustle mm-hmm. the grift the grift though so this grifter this grifter is given over six hundred dollars a month to charity and he's talking about uh, how he gives to one family. He said, uh, I spend money that I would otherwise spend on going out or just putting it in savings. Uh, it's worthwhile for him, he says, because it's not a significant amount of money for me. It makes a difference for others. This is to try to end homelessness and break the cycle of poverty for local families. So he has given back, right? But here's what he spends and how he spends it. Uh, $825 a month. Lives in a shared house with four roommates and a dog. He could technically afford a studio apartment, which goes for uh, fourteen hundred to two thousand. Studio, 000 a month. oh my god! 14... See, that's what I'm saying. Depends where you live. Yep, uh, our mortgage payment is less than that. Yes. And we own a house, and it's a pretty big house. He prefers to save and invest the extra cash instead. Uh, I like my rent to be at a number where it doesn't actually matter to me each month. That's actually that's smart. That's good. That's good advice. It's smart. This guy's actually pretty smart because I remember, you know, even when we bought this place, they were like. They always say that, like, no more than, I guess, a third of your, your We income. were approved up to twice what we paid for this place. Yeah. And we could have got a much bigger house, a much nicer house. I mean, this house is pretty cool now because I've done a lot of work to it. But we could have afforded a, a much bigger place. We didn't do it. We thought, okay, well, if something happens, and then we have to come up with that money, what can we actually think we can come up with on our own outside of a job a month that we don't lose our house? And even, and it, and it did come, the worst case scenario did come to pass. And we got close to losing the house, but we were able to succeed because one, we hustled our asses off. And two, um, um, we bought a house we could afford even if something happened like he's saying and th- this is solid advice right there yeah solid advice guys he buys he buys his groceries from Trader Joe's uh, we he, buy ours from places like that Aldi. too Aldi love Aldi's love Aldi's if it wasn't for Aldi and the and the uh, well we can't do it so much now but they have an Amish uh, scratch and dent yeah. food place they, they have here great that... deals and I'll tell you what you know something else another thing I'm going to recommend I don't care how much money I make I'm still going to do I shop at thrift stores all the time I shop at garage sales I find really awesome stuff I find stuff brand new with tags and I might pay like 3 bucks for it where it was like tagged at like 60 so I mean constantly I always buy, buy used cars you know within a couple of years all that I recommend it totally so this guy's actually I mean smart dude yeah because I looked into it first I'm like oh please who's making and I'm like oh okay well he's self-employed there's good advice here and there actually is good advice here um he pays 8150 for a Charlie card which lets him use a subway so he doesn't own a car oh he is in Boston yeah yeah, yeah so stuff, yeah. yeah if you live in I mean it's one Boston's advantage of expensive yeah it's one yeah we've got friends in Boston it's like holy hell how much do you pay for that yeah <laughs> um but uh you know, when you're in an urban area, that's one of the advantages. You don't have to own a car because, I mean, God, who could afford a car in Manhattan? Just a place for garage parking. It. Yeah. yeah, just a garage. It's like, holy sh- crap. Uh, he spends between 40 and 50 a month on Lyft rides. His phone bill is only $40. Oh, he's on his family's phone plan. Yeah, our phone bill is way more than that. Uh, everything else, utilities, again, shared house. So it's smart. The, the rule of thumb. 
here is you make way more than you actually spend and you'll actually come out ahead. Right. But the trick is that's old time. That's that's boomer and pre pre boomer uh, knowledge right there. That is pre boomer knowledge. I wonder if his grandparents gave him. I don't know because my grandpa used to when he get paid. My mom told me they would have envelopes and they would put the money in the envelopes and those that would be for the bills and they had money saved and they had money um, because they would make sure that the, that they didn't spend more than they had. Um, I think that's a problem that you know our generation and you know maybe even our parents fell into was the credit. Yeah, you know, living on credit. Now, I will give the millennials this. They seem to be more. They seem to be smarter about that. And I know our kids are way smarter about that. Yeah. Well, I think I think, you know, younger people especially have seen a lot of like, you know, major financial issues. And that kind of defined our, our grandparents generation, you know, with the Great Depression and post war and all seen that. A lot. Millennials, too. I mean, from yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like 2001, they've seen, we had a, we've had recessions how many times? Yeah. So they're seeing that like you can't bank on the jobs always being there the money always being there things change and you need to you have to rely on yourselves yeah you think they'd rely on themselves more but instead i go out to twitter and i see people whining about how they're not getting paid nearly enough to do whatever thing they're doing which doesn't pay enough and if it's not paying enough go do something else if it's not paying enough they think they should be entitled to be given money every month so they can still keep writing they're doing their influence their influencer stuff and you know get paid you know from the government to do so right kickstarter is paying almost a hundred thousand dollars a year let's unionize so not only not only do we get paid a hundred thousand dollars a year to basically just you know push buttons but we get paid a hundred thousand dollars a year and we can dictate what the product is and guess what 40 percent of them are gone mm -hmm. uh they're gone you had a nice cushy job and and it's it's gone now because you had to push it you had to push it and that's what happens um, or pick a career that get, that you know pays like coding so, yeah. <laughs> instead of journalism instead of comics um so this is the same author who wrote that and she put this out too so i i'm like i don't know if she's like completely like i don't know she's a money person so i don't know if she's out of touch with where people actually are but she's like one in six millennials have a hundred thousand dollars saved Here's how much you should have at every age. And she's basically talking about your, by the time you're 30 years old, you should have at least $50,000 in savings. Um, by the time you're 35, you should have twice your annual salary saved, 40. And people, I remember this one going around too, and people were laughing at that. They're like, I don't even have enough money to pay the bills. Most people don't, most people don't have enough money to have savings. I mean, that's just the reality of the situation. People working two jobs just to, you know, and especially in the cities, to just to, you know, keep their house. Um, you know, there's no way at home. There's no way they can, you know, save up this kind of money. It's very unrealistic for most people. And it's sad. It shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't be this way, you know. But, but again, you might have to pick something that pays or move someplace that you can afford. Yeah, because what, what we're seeing as a pattern, especially, you know, and to bring this back to what we do talk about, which is, you know, pop culture and, and comics and animation, all that. You've got a lot of younger people picking uh, dodgy career paths and moving to very expensive areas. You know, and that combination, that's going to just completely obliterate, like, oh, I'm, you know, you have people complaining at Marvel Comics about making thirty five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year in New York. You pick the job. Yeah, you're, you're getting screwed. You just, you know, leave that job. You know, and and comics, frankly, it's not going to be around much longer. Look what happened to DC Comics. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, same with uh, digital journalism. Like, it's not going to be around much longer. Find something else. I, I, there, there was a guy, he was an executive. He started like a dog poop cleaning business and he made more money clean up dog poop. Well, yeah, sometimes the jobs that make the most money are the jobs you don't want to do. Like, I mean, they, they said they're predicting huge amounts of money and huge job, uh, good jobs for people with uh, blue collar jobs that know how to do plumbing, construction, those kind of things. Because people are so busy going to colleges, they don't know how to do it. And, you know, the generation that could do it themselves, a lot of them are, 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 are you know, passing away and stuff. So people um, now have to hire people. And there's there people are going to make more money than doctors that are like electricians and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So I'm like, you know, you don't have to. This whole idea that you have to go to college to make good money is a load of shit, first of all. And it's a scam because a lot of times these colleges are charging way more money than they should be charging. And then with the college I went to, they were charging all this money. And then a lot of the money, they spent millions of dollars on archways in front of the campus to make it look pretty. The, the dean needed a house remodel and a bunch of money went to the house remodel, like ridiculous money that, that shouldn't have cost that much. So these colleges are just charging for things they don't even need to charge for. You know, you don't even need it half the time. Like SCAD, the Savannah College of Art, they were doing the same thing. Their, their dean was getting like, you know, a half million dollars a year or something. And they had a lot of ridiculous, frivolous expenses. Then you had people that were getting degrees that were 
worthless, but just to wrap it up with um, Monopoly for Millennials, uh, they're talking about, you know, salty people on Facebook. I remember we had a ton of backlash in the comments when we did Sorry, the video. Sorry, it was funny. Yeah, but this is a 28-year-old from Minnesota, took to Facebook to voice his disapproval. He told CNN, the game is an insult, and it's never good to kick somebody when they're down. This is one of the biggest game uh, companies in the world, making the fact that property ownership is impossible for most people my age. I know a lot of people who are 28 that have houses here. There's a lot of 20-some-year-olds in this area and other areas that have houses. Well, this guy could buy a house or three. right that's bullcrap you, you choose to be down and you choose you put yourself in that position i mean sometimes you don't have a choice but sometimes you do and if you're choosing to stay where you're at that's your choice i've been homeless yeah. like people people you know I, I tell people this before i mean now i put myself basically in that position but when i was first starting out you know i was couch surfing and it took me a long time to to get stable even when we first got married it took a while for us to mm -hmm. you know stabilize but um, you know, it's not easy, but yeah, sometimes you have to make uh, uh, career choices that, uh, you know, benefit you in the long run. And I'm sorry if you're not getting paid, you know, $100,000 a year to, to, to give your hot takes on the Mary Sue or something. But, oh, uh, you know, maybe maybe you're better off, you know, doing something else like like coding. And you can you can you can make you two can own a house if you pick a career path that actually pays. That's right. Just saying. So we're going to wrap this up. Just thought it was really interesting. This was making the rounds again. Hustle. Always hustle. Always hustle. And this actually, this guy seems like a pretty smart guy. I do think so. He does. I, I mean, I think it's unrealistic for overall, but it's an exception, not the rule. He is but an exception. He, yes. you want, but like he has really good ideas. And I, I do think what he has, he's on the, he's, he's a good example. He's on the right path. This is two years ago, and I'll watch it. We Google him, and he's like flat ass broke. I don't, I don't, I don't think he would be. I don't think he would be because you can't keep somebody who really wants it down. It's just you know that is true. You have to really want it, and I think I think you know. Again, we're gonna wrap it up here pretty soon, but I think you have a lot of people out there that that believe capitalism is bad. They believe money is bad. It's dirty. It's awful. So if your goal is not to make money. You're not going to make money. No, their goal is to try to control everything. Right, right. So if, if you're, yeah, if, if you're happy getting paid in upvotes, I guess that's fantastic. But don't bitch about eating cat food in your apartment with nine roommates because that's what you've chosen. That's the path you've chosen. I feel bad, but if there's probably food pantries. Don't eat cat food. Don't eat cat food. It's gross. All right, you're going to wrap it up. Yes, please do. Okay, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.